apart from David killing Goliath, how much do you know about Goliath? Well, in this video we will learn about the additional extremely tall warriors among the Philistines from 2 Samuel 21 verses 15 to 22 and 1 Chronicles 20 verses 4 to 8. Despite the fact that the lists are not exactly the same, we were able to determine that there were four. Saf who was also known as Sipai, Lami, Ishbai Banab, and an unidentified fighter. The descriptions are comparable to those of Goliath, mentioning their huge stature, and the size of their arsenal. The unidentified giant is reported to have six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, unlike Goliath or any of the other fighters who have been given names. The account of this giant is the sole place where the anomaly known as polydactylism is described. When other gigantic clans are discussed in the Bible, it is not mentioned. The majority of people have at least heard the tale of David and Goliath of Gath also known as the Gittite. The names of the protagonist and antagonist are famous. But aside from the fact that an Israeli child by the name of David cut off the gigantic Goliath's head, how much do people actually know about him? In the Old Testament, a number of people groups are identified as giants or as having giants living among them. Since the beginning of time, giants have existed. The Bible first mentions them in Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4. Giants initially seem to have been seen favorably, frequently viewed as superheroes, especially by the non-Hebrew inhabitants. Giants continued to appear in biblical texts after the Great Flood, but their favorability had dwindled in the minds of the Hebrews, and were frequently tended to be considered as the enemy, frequently engaged in battle in armies. Before and after the Flood, various distinct races of giants coexisted. It's not entirely clear how each large family relates to the others. The Nephilim, for instance, seem to have existed ever since the Flood, Numbers 13 verse 32 to 33. After the Flood, there were the Emits, the Ammonites or the Anakites, and Rephaim, Deuteronomy 2 verses 10 to 11, who appear to be distinct beings even though the chronicler frequently uses the word like to imply that they had a common morphology. It appears that the Anakim are descended from the Nephilim. Despite their similarities to the Nephilim, the Rephaim seem to have a different family history from them. According to Deuteronomy 2 verse 21, the Ammonites dwelt in their stead, after largely subduing the Rephaim. O.G., king of Bashan, who slept on a bedstead of iron, Nine cubits was the length of it, and four cubits the breadth of it, was one of the most notable Rep Hayam. Deuteronomy 3 verse 11. The distance from the elbow to the tips of the fingers was one cubit. He appears to be one of the Rephaim's final survivors. A race of giants suggests a hereditary component, and certain names etymologies may hint at the underlying genetic mechanism. According to Proverbs 1 verse 9, the Hebrew word anak may refer to a necklace or even a goiter. This may indicate hyperthyroidism, which may be brought on by pituitary gland or other endocrine problems. There are the Anakim, who were confronted by the Israelites under Moses and subsequently under Joshua, Numbers 13 verse 22 to 33, Joshua 15 verses 13 to 14, and who are descended from the Nephilim recorded in Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4. Numbers 13 verse 33. The country east of the Jordan River used to be thickly populated by tall people known as Enim, Deuteronomy 2 verses 10 to 11 and the Zamzumim, sometimes known as the Zuzim, before the children of Israel went through the Transjordan, Deuteronomy 2 20. In Amos 2 verses 9 to 10, the Amorites, another people who opposed Israel's claim to the promised land, are characterized as being extraordinarily tall. Finally, the Rephaim are mentioned almost 20 times, most frequently in connection with the conquest of the Promised Land when Moses confronted King Oji of Bashan, whose bed measured 13 feet in length. Deuteronomy 2 verse 11, verse 20 to 22, chapter 3 verse 11 to 13, Joshua 12 verse 4, chapter 13 verse 13. Rephaim was Goliath. He and the four enormous soldiers listed next to him are descendants of Gath's Rapha, 2 Samuel 21 verse 22, 1 Chronicles 20 verse 8. The four warriors were all brothers of Goliath if Rapha is taken to be a proper name, 
Rapha. This is not truly stated in the biblical text. Lami is the only one of these males who is specifically identified as being Goliath's brother. The phrase should therefore be rendered as giants or rapayim, as is the case in many English translations. The descendants of some of the rapayim giants who survived the conflicts between Moses and Joshua resided in the Philistine city of Gath. Even though the other warriors who fought alongside Goliath weren't related to each other, they were all descendants of an uncommon and long-lasting lineage that rejected Israel's God and challenged them for their territory. None of these other men's heights are mentioned in the Bible. Due to discrepancies in the manuscript evidence, the height of Goliath is unknown. These chapters also bring a well-known problem with the Bible. Elhanan, not David, slew Goliath of Gath. In addition to the groupings of people mentioned above, other groups may have been extraordinarily enormous, depending on how we interpret the names, placements, and lists of the obvious giant clan groups, and the Hebrew names' meanings. The Horites, Avim, and Jebusites are a few examples. Lami La was killed by Elhanan, according to 1 Chronicles 20 verse 5, and was Goliath's brother. But according to a comparable text in 2 Samuel 21 verse 19, Elhanan the son of Jerovorajim, the Bethlehemite, slew Goliath the Gittite, whose shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam. There appears to be a typographical mistake here. Ishbibanab was a huge warrior who supported the Philistines in their conflict with the Israelites. 2 Samuel 21 verses 16 and 17. Abishai, one of David's soldiers, killed him. David's life was saved by Abishai's deed, which inspired his warriors to forbid David from engaging in further combat. One of the four sons of a giant who resided in the Philistine city of Gath was Ishbibnam. Brass from his spear weighed 300 shekels. 2 Samuel 21 verses 16 to 22. King James Version. And Ishbib now, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed three hundred shekels of brass in weight, he being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. But Abishai the son of Zeruiah succored him, and smote the Philistine, and killed him. Then the men of David swear unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. And it came to pass after this, that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibachai the Hushathite slew Saph, which was of the sons of the giant. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan the son of Jerioragim, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature, that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan the son of Shemiah the brother of David slew him. These four were born to the giant in Gath, and fell by the hand of David, and by the hand of his servants. 2 Samuel 21 verse 19, New International Version. In another battle with the Philistines at Gob, Elhanan son of Jair, the Bethlehemite killed the brother of Goliath the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. 1 Chronicles 11 verse 23, New International Version. And he struck down an Egyptian who was five cubits tall. Although the Egyptian had a spear like a weaver's rod in his hand, Benaiah went against him with a club. He snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. 1 Chronicles 20 verses 4 to 8, New International Version. In the course of time, war broke out with the Philistines at Gezer. At that time Sibachai the Hushathite killed Sippai, one of the descendants of the Rephates, and the Philistines were subjugated. In another battle with the Philistines, Elhanan son of Jair killed Lami the brother of Goliath the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. In still another battle, which took place at Gath, there was a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in all. He also was descended from Rapha. When he taunted Israel, Jonathan son of Shermea, David's brother, killed him. These were descendants of Rapha and Gath, and they fell at the hands of David and his men. 
1 Chronicles 20 verses 6 to 7, New International Version. In still another battle, which took place at Gath, there was a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in all. He also was descended from Rapha. When he taunted Israel, Jonathan son of Shermea, David's brother, killed him. Thank you for your support.